us right now has been uh, a sharp critic of the of the administration's uh, NSA surveillance program. So what do you think, Senator? Were you pleased? Were you not so pleased? Well, what I think I heard was that uh, if you like your privacy, you can keep it. But in the meantime, we're going to keep collecting your phone records, your emails, your text messages, and likely your credit card information. So I didn't hear any lessening of the spying on Americans or collecting records of Americans. I heard that, trust me, I'm going to put some more safeguards in place, but I'm going to keep right on collecting every American's records. This is a, something that's going to have to be decided by the Supreme Court. I think there is a real fundamental question whether one general warrant can apply to millions of people's records. And I think it's uh, incorrectly being done, and the Supreme Court's going to ultimately have to decide on this. You've actually filed a lawsuit. Reminder of viewers, what is so irritating, upsetting to you? Well, the thing is, is that, you know, uh, he mentioned Paul Revere, but Paul Revere was uh, warning us of the British coming. He wasn't warning us that the Americans are coming. You know, the thing is, is that the lesson from the American Revolution that the president, I think, misunderstands is that we were upset about British soldiers writing their own general warrants, like national security letters, that allowed them to go into the colonialist house and look at their papers. We didn't like that. So we wrote the Fourth Amendment to say warrants have to be individualized. They have to name specifically the person and the place. We didn't want a dragnet where everybody's information was held, whether it's held by the government or a private entity. I, I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm, I'm more or less concerned by having a private entity. Who are we going to hire? Eric Snowden's contractor to hold all the information? I don't want them collecting the information. It's not about who holds it. I don't want them collecting every American's information. Um, you know, he mentioned 9-11. The thing about 9-11 is we didn't do the appropriate things because we didn't do good police work and we never even asked for a warrant. An FBI agent in Minnesota sent 70 letters to his superiors asking, can we get a warrant on this guy who wants to take off planes but not land them? And they didn't do the appropriate thing. They never asked for a warrant, which they could have gotten. We don't here's need a, all this extra collection of information. Here's a, here's a hypothetical, and we'll, we'll get your analysis of potentially what it means. And obviously, there were a lot of mistakes leading up to 9-11. What they're trying to do is learn from those mistakes to make sure there isn't another 9-11. Let's say the U.S. intelligence community learns that there is a terrorist in Yemen or Somalia or Afghanistan or someplace uh, uh, in a sensitive area. They have the, the cell phone. They're monitoring that individual's cell phone. That individual makes a call to someone in Louisville, Kentucky, in your home state. What's wrong with the NSA then getting a court order from the FISA court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, and trying to find out what that phone conversation between Somalia and Yemen, that terrorist suspect there, and someone in Louisville? I have no objection to having a warrant for a specific person to look at phone calls. And if we then get a warrant, we find out the person in Louisville is connected to the person in Yemen, then we get a warrant for all of their phone calls. If they called 100 people last month, we look at those 100, and then we ask the judge for another warrant. So I don't care if it's 10 hops out with a warrant. but. For the president to say, oh, we're only going to abuse the Fourth Amendment twice and not get warrants by hopping twice, not three times, it's either proper or improper. And there is a proper way of doing this, and this is with a judicial warrant, individualized to the person, and then you can go and look at their friends with another warrant. We do this all the time. At 4 a.m., if there's somebody who's a potential murderer or rapist or you name it, we just call a judge and get a warrant, but we separate the police power from the judicial power. That's why we have to, I think, really reassess whether or not police officers or FBI agents should write their own warrants. I think only judges should write warrants. At one point in the speech, uh, and the president spoke for about 45 minutes, Senator, he made this point. Let me play this little clip. After an extended review of our use of drones in the fight against terrorist networks, I believed a fresh examination of our surveillance programs was a necessary next step in our effort to get off the open-ended war footing that we've maintained since 9-11. And for these reasons, I indicated in a speech at the National Defense University last May that we needed a more robust public discussion about the balance between security and liberty. Of course, what I did not know at the time is that within weeks of my speech, an avalanche of unauthorized disclosures would spark controversies at home and abroad that have continued to this day.
He then went on to mention Edward Snowden specifically. He said, given the fact of an open investigation, I'm not going to dwell on Mr. Snowden's actions or motivations. Where does Edward Snowden, from your perspective, fit into this current debate and these proposed reforms the president put forward today? You know, I think it leads to whether or not you think the president is genuinely concerned or not. I don't think we'd be here, and I think there'd be absolutely no reform had there not been the releases by Snowden. Now, it's a separate question, you know, what to do with him and whether he broke the law, which I think he did, and how he should be punished. But the thing is, we wouldn't have any of this information, and we wouldn't have any discussion. But what I think the president misunderstands is he thinks when there's a problem and there may be a potential for abuse of problems, he'll get some lawyers together that all work for him, and then they'll review it and put more safeguards on it. The NSA cannot oversee themselves. The administrative, uh, the administration or the executive branch can't oversee themselves. That's why we separate these powers. But we separated the police power from the judiciary power. So we can't have internal lawyers kind of looking at this and saying, oh, well, let's try to make sure everybody's privacy is taken care of. See, really, he's not going to fundamentally change any of this. Many of us think it's an invasion of our privacy to have our text messages collected, our emails collected, our phone records collected, and likely our credit card statements collected. We think that's an invasion of privacy, simply the collection, unless you get a warrant from a judge for a specific person that there's probable cause to think that they've committed a crime. That's the way our country was set up, and so what he's talking about is a different kind of country than our founding fathers envisioned. He did say at one point that uh, even though there should be a healthy skepticism, he found no evidence that there has been any abuse by anyone at the NSA as far as the personal privacy records of, the American, of, of American citizens. You heard him say that. You know, I think that uh, if you look back through the record, though, the FISA court actually has rebuked the NSA on several occasions and said that they uh, were doing things they shouldn't be doing. But I have a fundamental problem with the FISA court. It's in secret. And so you can't discuss and determine the extent of the Fourth Amendment or the extent or circumspection or circumscription of the Constitution in secret. It has to be done in public. So one of the reforms that I've proposed, and I have legislation that would do this, would say that if you're given a FISA court order and you want to challenge the constitutionality of it, it should go to an appellate court and to the Supreme Court. Right now it's a dead end. In the FISA court, a secret court and a secret judge without adversarial, without arguments on both sides, only the government argues in FISA, it, that's not the way you can uh, determine what is and what is not constitutional. It has well, to be they, in the light if, of day, if, and I if think they it add needs a public, to be before the Supreme Court. If they add a public advocate to that FISA court system, is that going to satisfy you? It's better, and uh, my reform that I'm doing with Senator Wyden does have a public advocate in there. But ultimately, I think what uh, legal scholars will tell you is that to find truth, we have this adversarial process where someone actually literally works for you on your side of the question and on the government side of the question, and it goes back and forth, and it's our way of trying to find truth in our courts. And I don't think you can truly find it if the public advocate still works for the government. You know, we have an IRS advocate right now, and I, I haven't seen hide nor hair of our IRS advocate during these scandals when they were investigating uh, tea Party groups. So I don't think it works necessarily if they're appointed by the government. To truly have an adversarial process, they have to be hired by someone who thinks that uh, they're being injured by the government. Uh, Senator, give the president a grade for his speech today, A being excellent, F failure. You know, I always give him an A for effort. I like the president. I like uh, what he says so much. I mean, if you looked at the gist of what he's saying, he was saying all the right things. I can really, I want to stand up and cheer until I realize what he just told me was all these great things about my privacy, except for he really, between the lines, told me he's going to continue to collect all of my private records without a warrant. So he says the right thing. I think his heart really is in the right place. And I think his motives are not bad. Neither do I think James Clapper's motives are bad. I think they want to protect the country. But I don't think that there's enough of a healthy respect uh, for the Fourth Amendment. And we government needs to be, there needs to be a limitation to government power. And I see this as virtually unlimited power to look at our records. And it really needs to be reined in. So the grade would be? <laughs> well, A for effort and probably C for content. Senator Paul, uh, thanks very much for coming in, giving us your immediate reaction to the president's speech. We appreciate it as always. Thank you, Wolf.